more fulfilling future. The Nature of Leadership Decisions Leaders are inevitably hemmed in by constraints. They operate in scarcity, for every society faces limits to its capabilities and reach, dictated by demography and economy. They also operate in time, for every era and every culture reflects its own prevailing values, habits, and attitudes that together define its desired outcomes. And leaders operate in competition, for they must contend with other players, whether allies, potential partners, or adversaries, who are not static, but adaptive, with their own distinct capacities and aspirations. Moreover, events often move too quickly to allow for precise calculation. Leaders have to make judgments based on intuitions and hypotheses that cannot be proven at the time of decision. Management of risk is as critical to the leader as analytical skill. Strategy describes the conclusion a leader reaches under these conditions of scarcity, temporality, competition, and fluidity. In finding the way ahead, strategic leadership may be likened to traversing a tightrope. Just as an acrobat will fall if either too timid or too audacious, a leader is obliged to navigate within a narrow margin suspended between the relative certainties of the past and the ambiguities of the future. The penalty for excessive ambition, what the Greeks called hubris, is exhaustion, while the price for resting on one's laurels is progressive insignificance and eventual decay. Step by step, leaders must fit means to ends and purpose to circumstance if they are to reach their destinations. The leader as strategist faces an inherent paradox. In circumstances that call for action, the scope for decision-making is often greatest when relevant information is at its scantiest. By the time more data becomes available, the margin of maneuver tends to have narrowed. Amid the early phases of a rival power's strategic arms buildup, for example, or in the sudden appearance of a novel respiratory virus, the temptation is to regard the emerging phenomenon as either transitory or manageable by established standards. By the time the threat can no longer be denied or minimized, the scope for action will have constricted or the cost of confronting the problem may have grown exorbitant. Misused time and limits will begin to impose themselves. Even the best of the remaining choices will be complex to execute with reduced rewards for success and graver risks in failure. This is when the leader's instinct and judgment are essential. Winston Churchill understood it well when he wrote in The Gathering Storm, 1948, statesmen are not called upon only to settle easy questions. These often settle themselves. It is where the balance quivers and the proportions are veiled in mist that the opportunity for world-saving decisions presents itself. In May 1953, an American exchange student asked Churchill how one might prepare to meet the challenges of leadership. Study history. Study history, was Churchill's emphatic reply. In history lie all the secrets of statecraft. Churchill was himself a prodigious student and writer of history who well understood the continuum within which he was working. But knowledge of history, while essential, is not sufficient. Some issues remain forever veiled in mist, forbidding even to the erudite and experienced. History teaches by analogy, through the ability to recognize comparable situations. Its lessons, however, are in essence approximations which leaders are tested to recognize and are responsible for adapting to the circumstances of their own time. The early 20th century philosopher of history, Oswald Spengler, captured this task when he described the born leader as, above all, a valuer, a valuer of men, situations, and things, with the ability to do the correct thing without knowing it. Strategic leaders need also the qualities of the artist, who senses how to sculpt the future using the materials available in the present. As Charles de Gaulle observed in his meditation on leadership, The Edge of the Sword, 1932, the artist does not renounce the use of his intelligence, which is, after all, the source of lessons, methods, and knowledge.